Right, hello everyone. Um, I'm very sorry not to be joining uh, you, I was going to say in person, but I think you know what I mean, uh, without having to record this at the moment. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing everyone else's contributions. So my name is Simon Brown. Uh, I have the great honour of being curator of this place here, uh, Newstead Abbey in Nottinghamshire, the home of Lord Byron. So of course, the question uh, that's been posed uh, by this symposium, what is the most romantic object in your collection? Uh, it feels like it's one that I'm answering every day. <laughs> um, and one that I could have answered in many, many different ways. Uh, but I chose to answer it uh, today uh, with this object here, at uh, the tomb of Boson, Lord Byron's dog. Uh, it's an image I'm sure you're familiar with. And uh, I want to at least lay out uh, now why I feel it's such a romantic object of one of many, many, many <laughs> that we have in the collection here. So just in case uh, you don't know what Byron looks like, here he is uh, from the portrait by Thomas Phillips that hangs here at Newstead in the Grand Drawing Room. And there's plenty to say about Byron. And I'm sure there'll be a lot to be said uh, in this symposium. Uh, but his love of animals is something that gets mentioned continually by visitors here and by researchers and people that I work with here because it's such a self-evident thing. Um, Lord Byron loved animals. He kept on all manner of animals with him at Newstead and throughout his life. Um, there is a famous uh, tale of him having a pet bear at Cambridge. Um, he wanted to take his dogs with him to Cambridge University. And when uh, he found that there was a rule against dogs, he then asked the question, is there a rule against bears? Which is a question that any of us would ask, I'm sure. Um, when the forthcoming answer was no, because no one's asked such a mad question, he got a bear. And he had a pet bear with him uh, at Cambridge, and he brought that bear back with him uh, to Newstead after he, after he left there as well. Um, we have a letter in our collection uh, that's here that Lord Byron wrote to his friend Elizabeth Piggott uh, on the 25th of October 1807, describing this process, describing that he'd got uh, this pet bear. And uh, you can see at the bottom, uh, the bottom of the letter, his last words in that letter are write, 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 <laughs> which is one of my favourite phrases that we keep repeating about Lord Byron. So another thing that backs up that theory about his love of animals um, is something that Percy Shelley noted in his diary when he visited Lord Byron in Ravenna in 1821, where he lists uh, the animals that Lord Byron had with him. So I'll read it out here. Lord B's establishment consists, besides servants, of 10 horses, eight enormous dogs, three monkeys, five cats, an eagle, a crow and a falcon. And all of these, except the horses, walk about the house, which every now and then resounds with their unarbitrated quarrels as if they were masters of it. And further down, it says, P.S. I find that my enumeration of the animals in this palace was defective. I have just met on the grand staircase, five peacocks, two guinea hens and an Egyptian crane. So that's the, how, the kind of household that Lord Byron lived in uh, and that he cultivated and uh, became part of his legend. Another uh, element of uh, Byron's love for dogs uh, and love of animals uh, comes from when he was a child, when uh, he was uh, living in Southall, not far from Newstead, uh, about five miles from here. Uh, and when he was a child, they lived there while Newstead was rented out to Lord Grey de Ruthin. And, uh, one of his friends, uh, Elizabeth Piggott, who he wrote this letter to, um, wrote a book about him and, and uh, uh, illustrated it and called it The Wonderful History of Lord Byron and His Dog. The manuscript is uh, at the University of Texas, I believe now. It's in, in, a, in a university in the United States, but has been on uh, display here in the past. And this shows how inseparable he was from his dogs at a young age, the fact that uh, Elizabeth Piggott chose to record him in such a way. And you can see the illustrations that she made of him with his dogs here. So we do, this is not the only illustration of one of Lord Byron's dogs uh, that exists. 
This is the portrait of Bosun that we have uh, on display here at Newstead. Um, the portrait is there on the left and we have an image from our virtual tour uh, showing it on display here at Newstead as well on the right. You'll note that it's big. Uh, we've got other things in there for scale. It's bigger than any other portrait that Lord Byron had here, bigger than the one of him, bigger than the one of his mother, bigger than anyone else. Uh, and this was painted by Clifton Thompson, uh, who was local to Nottinghamshire and, and was one of the country's foremost animal uh, portrait painters of that time. But even this demonstrates uh, the special relationship that Lord Byron had with Boson. He was his best friend, he followed him everywhere. Uh, we have a letter in the collection that was written uh, from uh, Byron's desk in his bedroom, which overlooks the lake, the upper lake at Newstead, and it describes seeing Lord Byron rowing out into the middle of the lake in a little rowing boat with two of his dogs, including Boson. And Lord Byron jumped into the lake and then allowed Boson and the other dogs to pull him back to shore. He was teaching them how to rescue him. And um, sorry, you can hear my radio there. That shows that, that wouldn't happen if it was live. I'll edit it out maybe. Um, and he was teaching his uh, dogs to rescue him. That shows you a little bit about uh, their relationship. Bolson, uh, the way Bolson died was that he, one of the things that he used to do was that he would follow the postman, the letter deliverer, who would arrive at Newstead down the drive. And uh, when that happened, Bolson would follow the postman back up the drive, up to the main road towards Manfield, Mansfield. And one day when Bolson uh, was doing this and was following the lorry up there, he encountered another dog and they got into a fight, as dogs do, and was bitten and contracted rabies. So that's how uh, Bolson died. When Bolson came back after that fight to the house, Lord Byron Senior had been in a fight and it soon became apparent over the, the coming days that, that Bolson had contracted rabies. And if any of you know about rabies, you'll know that it basically makes dogs become violent. It, they lose control of their senses and um, everyone around Byron was telling him, you're going to have to put Bolson down because he'll become violent and he'll bite. And uh, Lord Byron refused. He couldn't do it. He, he, he said, I'm not going to do that. And uh, Bolson eventually died in Byron's arms. He never, he never bit Byron or anyone as well. So this was something that made Byron distraught, as you can imagine. Uh, and he built this elaborate tomb in the grounds. Um, you can see the image of the tomb on the left. Uh, and on the right, I've shown an aerial shot and ind indicated in red where the tomb is. Uh, Byron chose to have the tomb where he believed was the site of the altar of the medieval church at Newstead Abbey uh, that had been destroyed by Henry VIII. That's one of my favourite things about Byron. He buried his dog on the site of the altar of the church, which shows everything you need to know about his views on the dog, but also on the church. Um, he got his measurements out a bit because it was a bit further back, but that was his intention. What Byron intended for himself to be buried in the tomb with Boson and his servant, Joe Murray, he wanted three spaces in there for when he and Joe Murray died to go alongside Boson. Joe Murray refused. I'm not getting buried with a dog. <laughs> and so um, that wasn't going to happen. Um, but actually, Lord Byron put that he was to go alongside Boson in his will. And uh, we have a copy of uh, one of the first wills that he kept here. Um, you can see in the body of the text, if you look closely enough, if you could zoom in, uh, where Byron stipulates that he's to be married, buried alongside Boson. The long note in the margin is uh, Byron's copywriter explaining the legal stance and why it's not a good idea for a lord of the English nation to be buried alongside his dog. The note along the, on the bottom of that note is from Byron himself saying this must stand with his signature. So there's an argument going on there on the manuscript of the will about whether Lord Byron should be buried uh, alongside his dog. Um, in the event it didn't happen because Lord Byron had sold Newstead Abbey to Thomas Wildman uh, by the time of his own death. So it was on private land then. Uh, and Lord Byron, as you are likely to know, is buried uh, at St Mary's Church in Hucknall, about four miles from here in the Byron family vault. 
So I can hear you asking, why is it? Why would I view this to be the most romantic object in our collection? Um, I am not an academic. I'm not like a, the majority of you. I'm not an academically minded person. I'm a curator and interpreter of all of your amazing research and work. So like the best amateur interpreters, I went to the dictionary. <laughs> and uh, if we were to go with the dictionary definition of romantic, it says, among other things, that romance and romantic literature deals with the beauty of nature and human emotions. And when I read that, it took me immediately to this, immediately to this eulogy that Byron wrote for uh, Boson's tomb. Because this manuscript, as I'm sure you've all read before, it deals with the beauty of nature and human emotions. It's about love and friendship. If I were to paraphrase this uh, writing, it, would be, it basically says, I love this dog, people are rubbish. That's what this says. <laughs> Boson is Lord Byron's best friend and he's lost him and he's distraught in grief. He talks about how he possessed all the virtues of man without his vices. This is a friend who was more of a friend than any of the men and any of the human beings in his life. And it's been depicted as a symbol of love throughout time. There are photographs of people bringing their own dogs here, bringing their own families here and having um, family time here around this part of the house. And I love that it continues to be a symbol of love and friendship, not just about animals, but about love and friendship. And it continues to be a part of that today. And it's part of the tapestry of Newstead Abbey. You can see it as a pinprick there in a, the image of the grounds. And I could pick out loads of Byron quotes to go alongside that, but you will know um, Byron's work, There is a Pleasure in the Pathless Woods, where he says, I, not, I love not man the less, but nature more. And I think what he would have been thinking about when he wrote that was not only the beautiful uh, natural surroundings of Newstead Abbey and all the amazing places he lived, but also the love that comes through nature, through people and through his animals and especially Boson. So that's why I'm contributing uh, Boson's tomb to the symposium today. Thank you very much uh, for listening to that and uh, I really look forward to seeing the contributions from everyone else. Thank you.